down again. Trap six, Champagne Charlie. There, when Boris, the trap opened and he fell out. <laughs> oh, they hadn't inquired it. I found out what it was all about. The boys are switching the dogs, you see, so they had to disguise Champagne Charlie. They painted him just before the race. He got a bit hot inside the traps and he got stuck to the wood. <laughs> Only happened to me. Oh, well, what's the good of complaining? Money isn't everything. Mind you, if you haven't got any, and Charlie's cutting up those salt beef sandwiches, life can be very bitter. Charlie owns this place, Charlie's Nosh Bar. I spend most of my life in here, it's my office. Well, I say office. I got a phone in there he lets me use. <laughs> if it rings and he answers it, it's Charlie's Nosh Bar. If it rings and I answer it, it's James House, parent office of the Sydney Battle Model James Enterprises Limited. <laughs> Registered at the Board of Trade as a dodgy proposition. <laughs> Total assets at the moment, uh, thrift and safety, midday paper, second hand race card. Yes, you'll be seeing a lot of Charlie's nice bar. Most of my social life takes place in here. Come and have a look. Now that likely looking bird sitting at the table there, that's uh, Liz Baker. No. Liz. I should remember, that's my fiance, Liz. <laughs> Fraser, Liz Fraser, that's it. Seven years we've been engaged, and I want to keep it that way, but you know what women are, they go on nattering about, let's get married. <laughs> <laughs> have to spoil everything, don't I? The good girl, well charged, she's got a little drinking club in Soho. Nothing grand, nothing elaborate. I reckon she makes enough to keep the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose I'll have to settle down one of these days. If she ever asks me again when I've had 12 losers in a row, I think she might be lucky. <laughs> now that rat bag over there, that's Bill Kerr. Billy the Kerr, we call him. <laughs> nice bloke, he's my assistant. Well, he's a bit simple, you know, give him a roof over his head, the floor to lay his body on, and he's your mate for life. <laughs> yes, he's an Australian, come over here in 1945 for the victory parade and got lost. <laughs> To show you how bright he is, I found him begging outside the Labour Exchange. <laughs> here, here, watch this, watch this. <laughs> He's trying to hit the blue. He hasn't put it to brown yet. <laughs> He's colour blind, but they don't tell him. They make a fortune out of him. I think I'd better get inside. I'm buying a lunch today. I'm in dead trouble as it is. She doesn't like to be kept waiting. See ya. <laughs> Hello, Doc. Been waiting long? Oh, no. Just the usual three quarters of an hour. Oh, well, I'm sorry. You know, got chatting to the boys on the way down. You know how it is. Yeah. How much have you got left? I wasn't gambling. Just hanging around waiting to buy the midday papers. So? Well, we wanted to see how long Herman the German got for that fur job. Herman the German? What's he to you? Nothing. He was just running a sweep on his sentence, that's all. <laughs> I was only one year out. I guessed three and he got four. He's never been any good to me, that bloke. Hello, Sid. What is it? Two salt beef sandwiches, white bread and a pickled cucumber. That's the lunch you're going to buy me, is it? A salt beef sandwich and a pickled cucumber. Ah, oh, it's only temporary. One of these days I'll come up with a big deal and we'll be eating at the Ritz. Yeah, the day they start selling salt beef sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? You talk like you don't like salt beef sandwiches. Well, I just like a change now and then. Oh, look, Sid. Why can't we go to that little French restaurant in Greek Street? They do a lovely menu there, real elegant. Yeah, so are the prices. I'll pay for it. What are you trying to do? Take my pride away from me? I'll well, probably have to pay for the salt beef sandwich, so what's the odds? It's not a principle of the thing at all. It's your money. Salt beef sandwiches are cheaper. <laughs> what difference does it make as long as one of us have got it? We're going to get married, aren't we? Well, of course we're going to get married. What's the point of getting engaged if you don't intend to get married? Well, we have been engaged for seven years. I know, I know. <laughs> if you ain't that much longer, this will be an antique. <laughs> oh, well, that sandwich of it doesn't hurry up. Come on, Charlie, what's the matter? You cut your fingers off or something? All right. Look, Sid, I know the subject is distasteful, but I have been waiting for you seven years. Seven years I've been waiting for you to make your fortune. Half a fortune. To get a job, even. Five bad jobs? Yes, 273. <laughs> Not one of them you 
stayed it any longer than it took you to find out what you had to do. Well, I don't like working for other people. You can't make any money that way. Well, you make more than you do working for yourself. I'm warning you, Sid. You can't expect a girl to stay a fiancé all her life. Here we go. Well, I've had offers, you know. One of my customers at the club is always asking me out. He's a stockbroker. He's got two kids. His wife's dead. And he'll be joining her if he touches you. <laughs> well, it's not fair. I want to get married and have kids while I'm still young enough. Oh, blimey, you got years yet. My mother didn't have me until she was 46. Yes, and look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Two salt beef sandwiches with pickled cucumbers. It's about time, mate. The service is getting diabolical here, Charlie. Yeah, that's not my fault. Sit, I'm on my own these days. Well, where's your missus? In hospital, she's having a kid. How many is that? Seven. No, eight. Eight? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? What's wonderful about that? Anybody can do it. Well, why don't you have a try? Oh. <laughs> I've told you hundreds of times when I got the loot and not before. I've got my pride, you know. I don't go around sponging on my fiance. That'll be three and six, Sid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make a note of it, Doc. Here, look. Why do we quarrel? We're going to get married. I've got plans. Here, listen to this. Ministry of Supply announced an auction. Army surplus equipment, Great Missenden Bucks. 90,000 pairs of female khaki underwear. Now, that's all obsolete these days, the stuff. I get it for practically nothing. They don't wear that gear anymore. Well... Now, listen to this bit. Anglo-Russian trade pact. More English clothes for Russia. We dye them red, shove a hammer and sickle on the leg, dead racing. <laughs> the Rage of Moscow. How many rubles did I pound? I reckon we get 16 bob a pair. Oh, really, Sid? Well, blimey, what's the matter with you? They're, they're, they're not bothered about fashion out there. It's cold, mate. Yeah, do you want to start another war? You don't reckon it, then? Not a chance. How about Ghana? <laughs> Too hot. Yeah, well, I'll think of some other place. <laughs> Sid, Sid, I lost again. Can I have ten bob out of my wages? No, you had ten bob out of your wages yesterday. Well? Well, that's it, mate. You owe me the rest. What for? That little snooker game we had yesterday. Half a quid for every wrong colour you hit. Sid, how can you play snooker with a bloke who's colour blind? Well, if I don't take it off him, they will. I need it more than they do. Besides, this way we're keeping the money in the business. Yeah, but Sid, you don't understand. I owe them ten bob and they don't like to be kept waiting, those gentlemen, you know. Yeah, well, it'll teach you not to gamble. All right, I'm taught, but where's the money you won off me yesterday? I lost it at the dogs. Now, shut up. Oh, here you are. And don't play with them anymore. Or him, or anyone. Thanks, Liz. I'll give it to you back out of my next week's wages. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, I'd better be getting back to the club. Pubs will be closing soon and there'll be a rush on. Bye-bye, Sydney. See Ta -da. you later. And don't gamble. Oh, me? What do you think I am, a mug? <laughs> <laughs> well, Sid, what are we going to do today? What have you got lined up? Oh, I don't know, boy. We're in dead trouble. You know the Tommy Steele fan club's closed down. Apparently he's already got one. <laughs> what about all the photographs we had printed? Just have to wait for somebody else to come along who looks like him and get in quick. <laughs> uh, what a shame. Hey, what about going back to the parking meter racket? No, the cops are onto that one. Pity about that, the sweet little number we had down. Finding a street with no parking meters, putting up our own, going round every night collecting the loot, perfect. <laughs> <coughs> you spoiled that, that was your fault, you rat bag. Well, it wasn't my fault, I did what I was told. I loaded the van up, found an empty street and put the parking meters up. Yeah, but fancy big in that street. Well, that was, I'd another Prime Minister live down there. <laughs> <laughs> you should know about things like this. It ruined it. And he comes home that night with a Chancellor of the Exchequer and borrows a tenner to park his car. No wonder he made inquiries. <laughs> Look, Sid, why don't we open a strip club? <laughs> Every day you ask me that. Why don't we open a strip club? <laughs> well, why not? There's a lot of money in that game. 
Right up your alley, that would be. You'd love that, wouldn't you? Your <laughs> idea of heaven. Yeah. Working in a strip club, serving behind a bar, facing the stage. <laughs> Famous women through the ages. The only way you can tell what they represent is by looking at their hats. <laughs> well, no, I don't want to know. I don't like script clubs. I don't go with them. They're not proper. In any case, I've been into it, and the birds they offered me were dead taggy. <laughs> Put the customers right off their booze. So we wouldn't make any money either way. Hello? So old fair. It's another year gone by. It's amazing, isn't it? You gonna run in the waiters' race this year? Are you kidding? With my feet? Blimey, they're redder than my salt beef they are. Anyway, patrons aren't allowed to take part, it's only for staff. Who's favourite this year, then? Well, there's a big entry, but there's only three lads in it with a chance. Andreas the Cypriot, Pierre the Belgian boy, and Luigi from the Café Roma. At the last call-over, Passport Harry was offering two to one Andreas, five to two the Belgian, and hundred to eight the Italian. Not giving much away, are they? Who do you fancy? Well, if I were you, I'd have a handful of onces on the Cypriot. Handful of onces, me? I've got a handful of fluff in my pocket. <laughs> so it's two to one, what's the good of that? If you find me a nice little outsider, about a hundred to one, I might be interested. Hundred to one. Come on, give us a couple of sandwiches. How nice to see you. Where are you? Here, how about buying a cup of coffee for a fellow human being who's done his luck? No, I'm joking. I'm not, but don't get yourself a job. There's a boom on Who wants that? Don't be don't be like that. Go, buy me a cup of coffee. I've, I've only got semblance in my name. Well done. Yeah. That's twice as much as I got. <laughs> you know Come on, no drugs I'll in the, here. I'll tell you something. I'll take a Oh, Look, son, I don't want any trouble now. You go home and sleep it off, all, all right. right? Come on, all get right. off. I'll go, I'll go. But it's a fine thing when a man is forgotten so easily. Once, I was the idol of crowds up and down the country. <laughs> seen by thousands. <laughs> now the same people who used to see me can't even buy me a cup of coffee. A man... A man with a room full of amateur athletic association medals. <laughs> <laughs> the man that once ran second to Gordon Pilly at the White City. Second to Gordon Pilly at the White City. <laughs> <laughs> man who can't even get a cup of coffee. All right, I'll go. I'll go. But it's a fine thing. A fine thing. Time me kangaroo now, time me kangaroo now. It's really shocking. The things that are happening in Soho today, he comes in here begging. You don't have to beg today. It's a welfare state. There's enough for everybody. Now you look at this boy, he walks in here. Nice appearance, well set up, good education, three A's, fit, athlete. Blazer on? I'll never understand. Who did he run second to at the White City? Gordon Peary. <laughs> Come here! <laughs> hey! Stop back, bro! Stay back! Sid, where are you going? Wait a minute! Come on. Well, how's he coming along? More coffee. Liz, come on. Where's the coffee? Oh, come I on. I'm in. coming. I'm here. Get that down in. Come on, lad. Come on now. Wake up. Wake up. Oh, blimey, the smell of that cider. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, Sid, this is too much. I don't mind you coming to my flat. I'll bill occasionally. But strange drunks I draw the line at. May I remind you that this is my flat and not Routon House? Well, wait a minute, this lad's no ordinary drunk. He runs second to Gordon Pilly. So? He's a drunken runner. Now give him his coffee and get him out. Isn't that marvellous? No imagination at all. Can't see any food in their powder puffs. Now even the courier can see the possibilities of this, can't you? No, I just thought you were giving him the cup of coffee he was asking for. <laughs> How do I collect them? I'm like a speedboat with half a dozen anchors holding me back. Now look, think. This booze hound can make us a fortune. Now concentrate. Drunken runner, waiter's race, down on his luck, second to Gordon Pity, 
Do I have to draw a picture? You mean we're gonna get him That's to... right, we're gonna sober him up, get him a job at the Nosh Bar, and enter him for the waiter's race. But Charlie doesn't want a waiter, he's never had a waiter. Well, he's gonna have one now, mate, even if we gotta pay his wages ourselves. Oh, I wonder where I came in on this. Time <laughs> <laughs> the He's Bye. coming around. Come on, wake Bye. up, mate. You're with friends. Friends? Yes, friends, people who love you and care for you. The good Samaritan who found you wandering about the streets and offered you the hospitality of his home. Leave me alone. Here, give me a drink. Not another drink till after the race. Race? I can't race. I'll, I'll never race again. You've got one more race left in you, mate. The greatest race of your career. No, I can't race. I don't want to race. I couldn't beat Gordon Pilly. I couldn't beat him. I couldn't beat him. He was always in front of me. I couldn't stand it anymore. I listen, listen, listen. Oh. Nobody's asking you to beat Gordon Pitty. Just half a dozen flat-footed waiters. Come on, get him up to bed. Come on. Oh, sign me, can't get him down. Oh, come on, leave him here. Here, come on. There we are. Now, we're going to look after you and nurse you yeah. and care for you and bring you back to health and strength. Yeah. And I want you up at half past five tomorrow morning on the track ready to start work. <laughs> I want a drink. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Look at that leg. And look at those feet. Champion's plates, mate. When I think of the corns and the hard skin and the bunions that they're going to run against, it's money in the bank. <laughs> oh. I don't know, Sid. I don't need a waiter for the business I do. Here, Charlie. I'll pay his wages. Yeah, what are you getting out of this? Now then, I'm trying to do you a favour, that's all. Don't give me that. You're up to something. You're offering me this bloke. You're going to pay his wages so that I can sit down? No, no, no. No, I'm not having that. No, not you, Sid. <laughs> there must be something else in it. Well, then they're marvellous. Everybody just trusts me. Here I am trying to do you a... All right, I'll come clean. We stand to make a fortune out of this boy. That's more like He's it. an ex-runner, <laughs> and I've entered him for the waiter's race. But he's got to be a waiter to qualify. Now then, this boy is going to represent Charlie's Nosh Bar. Think of the publicity, think of the prestige. Think of the wages. I'm going to pay him. <laughs> Look, it's only for a week till after the race. Well, then what? Then you sack him. <laughs> Until next year. All right. Poof, it's a deal. Right, there we go then. Have yourself a few nickel on him to clean up. Professional runner. He'll be halfway up Greek Street before the bullet's out of the starter's gun. Ah, come on. <laughs> Here, I don't want to be a waiter. I want a drink. If you have one drink before the race, I'm warning you, you'll have to run twice as fast as Gordon Pitty to get away from me. Come on. <laughs> Mate, 26.4, that's eight seconds inside the record. <laughs> we go, we can't possibly get me there. Ah, you're in training. Have a bit of lemon. Yeah, but I'm... After the race, I'll buy all the booze you can handle. Promise? Yes, 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 sit down. Right, let's get back to the loot. How much have you raised? Well, I sold your car. Good, how much you get for it? 25 quid. <laughs> 25 quid? I just had it done up. Well, two new windscreen wipers. I told him that. <laughs> but as he pointed out, without a windscreen, it doesn't impress anybody. <laughs> I mean, a bit of glass, what's that? I mean, all he's got to do is run a diamond ring sound round somebody's shop window. What else? Well, I flogged the cigarette case Liz gave you for your engagement. No, 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 no. I gave that to her. She only paid for it. Oh. <laughs> I went round the flat and I flogged the electric fire, the furniture, the curtains, the carpets, and the vacuum cleaner. But that's not ours. I got two quid on it. Yes, well, you can't look a gift horse up the blinkers. <laughs> well, that makes a grand total of 43 pounds. 
43 pound and 100 to 1, that's 4,300. That's not bad to start with. Well, how do you know you're going to get 100 to 1 on him? We've got to make sure we do, mate. But look, he doesn't look a mug, does he? No. Get up. Walk up and down. You see, Sid, he's very athletic looking. Once they get a look at him, they're not going to give you odds like that. No, come here. Sit down. Take his shoe off. Now, we've got to hurry up here. We've got to get down to the nice part. I don't want to miss the final call over. Yeah, but I'm thirsty. Have another bit of lemon. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. That should hobble him. Well, what about a bit of glass as well? You always have to overdo everything. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to long? Take him around the back. Twenty to one dirty dominic. Anybody want to dirty dominic? Yeah, I'll tell you what I'll do. Come on, anybody bet? I'll lay you three hundred thirty-three to one. How's the betting going, Charlie? It's all going on the three favourites. They name twenty to one against all the others. Twenty to one, that's no good. We've got to have at least a hundred and one. Here, Kurt. The minute I cough, send Chester in. Hello, Albert. No, oh, Sid. I'll have half a quid to win Luigi. A very good choice, Sid, boy. A very fair chance the boy's got. Here, are. Huh? to win Luigi at two to one. Here, are. There's your ticket. 67. All right, anybody want a salt beef bet? sandwich, Come on, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, no, thanks. What about the pickled cucumber? Pickled cucumber. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that, then? Who that? That's Charlie's new waiter. Pitiful, isn't it? It's his plates, you know. Your uh, pickled cucumber, sir. Ah. <laughs> oh, the poor old devil. It's a shame, isn't it? He gone like a bomb today. You should have seen him yesterday. He must have toes like electric light bulbs under there. <laughs> oh, it's shocking. They didn't know how to make people like that work. No. And you know the joke of it? No what? Come in. Charlie's entered in for the waiter's race. No. Yeah. <laughs> what, him? Yeah. <coughs> Never. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just imagine him against a Cypriot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Cypriot. <laughs> or the Italian. Or the Italian, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. Now, shut up. I mean, listen, listen. Yeah. Just for a giggle. Yeah. <laughs> what on? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what else would you give? Yeah, go on. <laughs> I get the blood like that. What if? Yeah, him. Yeah. Under the one. Under the one. Yeah. You're on. Yeah. 43 next. <laughs> What's this? 43 next are on Chester at 100 to 1. Oh, no, shit. Now, look oh, here. You heard what he said. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, thank you. Ticket number 58. Herbert Welshman, never Welshes. Ta-da, I'll see you. <laughs> Try and lay some of these off, quick. <laughs> Just the first of many. Tonight we'll be washing our hair in it. Sit, the lady up at the race. Oh, come on. Looks a lot different from that drunkard ball that He night. is different. He hasn't had a drop for a week. Hang on, I've got to give him his last minute instruction. <laughs> well, how are you feeling, boy? Thirsty. Oh, turn it up. <laughs> you can paralyse any one of these kind horses. The easiest race of your career. Good luck. Right, gentlemen, you're under starting orders. Get your trays and line up here. A bottle of champagne! Oh, blimey, I forgot about that. Take it away from him! Take it away from him! Go oh, round there! Right up there, you idiot! He's disappeared round the corner. I know he has. Well, maybe now's a shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> I told you! 
told you, it's all over. Luigi's won. <laughs> 43 nicker down on Graham. I'll murder him. Ten yards in front he was. Just wait till I find him. He's going to get a right punch up the old sausage bite. <laughs> <laughs> Time a kangaroo now, boy. Time a kangaroo now. Well, where is he? He come round here. I saw him. Oh, look, Sid. Well, that's it. You're going to look for him. What's the point? You can't get four thousand three hundred niggers worth of pleasure out of bobbing a nit like that. Well, that's <laughs> it, Sid. We're really skint this time. I've pawned everything we own to raise the stake money. I haven't even got the threepence eight near started with. Oh, look, Sip, why don't you turn it in? You can't go on doing this for the rest of your days. It's not as though you're any good at it. Why don't you give it all up and come along quietly? <laughs> well, I've had a good innings, haven't I? <laughs> I mean, seven years off the York, you can't grumble at that. I suppose you've still got the licence. Yes, of course I am. Thought you might have. The prince has been paid it, but I think it's still legal. Hey, Sid! Yeah? Sid, I've been looking for you everywhere. I'll bring you glad tidings, my boy. You forgot to collect your winnings. Ten bob on Luigi at two to one, I think it was. Albert the Welshman never Welshes. They are. Ten bob, your stake money back. And two, four, six, eight, ten. And ten is twenty. A pleasure to do business with you, my boy. <laughs> Isn't that marvellous? Now you can buy me a wedding ring. Thirty bob. <laughs> Half a quid, Kempton, return. Found a win Lulu in the fourth. Kurt, we're back in business. Hey! hey! Oh, yeah. I'll see you later. Take the bottle, but you get a canner on it. 